So it's time to do a review on the Astro A50 Gen 4 headset for the Xbox One. Later in the video, I'm going to tell you two things that Astro and other people on YouTube won't tell you when it comes to this headset. So if you are looking to possibly purchase this headset for your Xbox, you need to stick around for a few minutes. I guarantee it will be a great savings for you if you play backward compatible games especially. It's also worth noting, they say this headset will be compatible with the Xbox Series X console coming out soon. I'm also considering giving this headset away because I'm not entirely happy with it. I will talk about that at the end of the video, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it and do this review. So I'm going to list the things I like about it first real quick. Number one, it does pick up footsteps really well, which was the whole reason why I decided to get this. You do need to have the right settings though. That's probably the most important thing when you first get it because right out of the box, it's not going to be that great. You do need to change those settings to what you are comfortable with for your own hearing. Everybody kind of has different settings and they mix those up on different games especially. The second thing I like about this headset is that it's 100% wireless. Usually most quote-unquote wireless headsets have to be charged by a cord or they have a chat cord. This headset doesn't need to be charged like that because you charge it on the base station. And the chat cord, it's nice not to have it in the way for once. However, I really wish this had an option for that. But there is no option because there is no audio jack on the headset. That's very important. I think people need to know that. I will talk about something similar to that soon, trust me. But I'm going to list this as a pro for now because no cords are in the way with the actual headset. And that's always a positive not to have cords in the way. And the third thing I like about this is the headset has decent directional sound. Not every headset has that. It's not perfect when it comes to pinpointing exactly which direction a sound is coming from, but it's better than most other headsets on the market today when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to the cons, and this is the big part of the video right here, the first thing I have to mention is the price. It's way too high. It's way too expensive for most other gamers, and I kind of combine this with the settings in the Astro Command Center. Those settings are extremely time consuming and confusing. I figured it would have some sort of basic explanation with what it did for such an expensive headset, but none of those settings are explained to you. You don't know what the frequency or hertz will do, dropping or messing around with the notches. It's all very confusing at first. In time though, you do get better at it, but it would have been nice to have more information on that, for such an expensive headset especially. When it comes to the big three for gaming headsets, the comfort, sound quality, and the microphone, those are the things that need to perform well. On this headset, in terms of comfort, I will give it 8 out of 10, which is a decent score, but the only things I wish were better, and this is why it's a con for me, is the size. I, I wish the headset was slightly bigger, so it would not feel as clampy sometimes, especially after long gaming sessions. And as far as the cloth design for the ear cups, I am not a fan of cloth. It completely sucks that Astro does not give you a choice when you first buy it. You have to get the custom mod kit, which costs an extra $40 on their website, to get the memory foam ear cups, which is ridiculous when you consider the fact that this was already a $300 or $320 purchase. So yeah, I wish this was memory foam. My ears get a little warm over time thanks to the cloth ear cups, but it's not the worst cloth I've used. Overall, it's not that bad for comfort, but it should have been better. I do think this is slightly more comfy than the HyperX Stinger because it's not as tight, but of course it should be way better than that when you're paying over six times that price. The third con, or thing I didn't like, when it comes to sound quality, I can go both ways on it. And this is what other people on YouTube, people from Astro will not tell you. They just completely forget to mention this, which I think is completely unfair. This headset 
is not good on Xbox backward compatible games. I can't stress that enough. I've had the sound cut in and out. I've thrown grenades, flashbangs, and sometimes the headset just does not pick up those sounds at all. I've had that happen a few times on Xbox One standard games as well, but I can tell you this, I've noticed it a hell of a lot more on backward compatible games. I really think this headset is designed only for certain games. I get it, they have thousands of different settings you can mix and match via the command center, but that takes up an incredible amount of time to figure out and see what works for each specific game that you play. And regardless of that, there is still no reason for some sounds to not pick up at all. So I think these would be decent for the newer Call of Duty games, but it's not for everything, I can tell you that. Sometimes it's just too much bass and not enough trouble for my ears. I mean, everyone's hearing is different, but it's not perfect. I would say it's far from it. Everyone always says Astro has the best sound quality with gaming headsets. I strongly disagree with that. It doesn't matter how good it picks up the footstep sounds when other audio is being completely cut out at times. And that's on multiple different EQ settings that I've tried. Like I said, it's great for footsteps, but not so great when the audio cuts in and out randomly. On PUBG, for instance, it's fantastic for footsteps, but I've also had somebody 10 feet away from me break glass and no audio ever picked up on the headset. I never heard it. I never heard the glass break right next to me. And I'll have a buddy of mine tell me, didn't you hear the glass break right next to you? And I'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? The eight words that sum up the sound on this headset are decent, but unreliable. Bass heavy, not enough trouble. Those are the eight words that sum it up right there. And this leads me to my next point. The microphone, this is the big one right here. Everyone says, oh yeah, Astro worked so hard to make their microphones better over the years. Let me tell you something, and, and this is the second thing they completely forget to tell you. The mic does not work on backward compatible games in game chat. I realize this might not be a big deal to some people, but for me, half the games that I still play are backward compatible games on the Xbox One. So, I mean, it's over $300 to get this headset. To me, everything should work in game chat, party chat, whatever. They say it's because it's a USB wireless mic. I guess that's their reasoning to why this should not work, when obviously it should. I've had a few optical USB Steel Series headsets before, which is essentially the same as this. And let me tell you, those microphones worked every time on backward compatible games. I've got a buddy that currently uses another USB mic from another company. He tried it out on a 360 backward compatible game for me while I was in the lobby with him and I heard him just fine. His mic was working despite it being a USB mic. So obviously the problem is not with all USB mics like Astro claims. It simply is just the Astro A50 Gen 4 itself from what I'm seeing, I think the A50 Gen 3 mic works on all Xbox games, but I don't know for sure. But the Gen 4? No, it doesn't. And this leads me to my fifth and final complaint. It's not necessarily about the headset, but their support team is terrible. I would say it's just as bad as SteelSeries when it comes to the support team. I've emailed them about the microphone, I've emailed them about how to lower the amount of bass, I've emailed them about what the settings do and the frequencies in the Astro Command Center. They just don't respond after the initial email. And a product can only do so much. A product is nothing without a good support team behind it, with good communication. Sure, it's a decent headset for footsteps, but for 300 plus dollars? I'm disappointed because of the mic not working on backward compatible games along with the sound not always picking up on several of those games along with a couple of regular Xbox One games. 
So is this headset worth buying? Absolutely not. It is not worth over $300. It's not even worth half of that. There are several other headsets around that $150 range that outperform this headset when it comes to two of the three big categories for gaming headsets, which are the overall comfort and also the microphone. For $150, I know I can find a headset that is a little less clampy and also has a better cloth design or even memory foam, which is what I prefer. And I know it will come with a mic that will work on all games that I play, not just half of them. And hopefully that mic has a mute button instead of the mute flip design that the A50 brings. I've always preferred the push to mute feature. So anyways, chances are this will be the last Astro product I ever get. I've owned one of the early gen A40s a couple years ago for my Xbox 360. And I thought that was one of the worst headsets I've ever owned. The A50s are definitely better in my opinion than those, but it still isn't worth the money you will be shelling out. And again, when you pay that high premium price, you expect it to do everything and more, or at least it should. And this headset doesn't do that. For $320, it should be the best gaming headset for console and come with the best quality for every category that I mentioned earlier. Charlotte Johansson herself. You know, either or. Sadly, it does not come with either. And having a terrible support team behind it doesn't help whatsoever. So I'm actually considering giving this headset away once I get a better headset. That's if I don't manage to sell it for a fraction of what it was worth brand new. And maybe somebody will have a better use for it than me, regardless of what I decide to do with it. I don't know. I haven't made my mind up on that yet, but... If I do give it away, it will be a Twitch follower prize most likely. You will have to be a follower or subscriber on YouTube in order to win this. If that happens, I just hope whoever wins doesn't play that many backward compatible games because this is probably the worst headset for those games. But anyways, thanks for listening. That's my review. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Peace.